introduction, Lindsay. I really appreciate that. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, I'm so happy that so many of you could be here today. As Lindsay stated, this is part of the Successful Club Series. It's my responsibility and my duty to deliver two of the speeches from this series every year as the VP of Education. I chose mentoring, just as Lindsay had mentioned, because it's close to my heart and I believe in it. One of the reasons I went to be, or I chose to run for the VP of Education was because of the mentoring program that Toastmasters has. So without further delay, let's get started. Now, what do you think of when you hear the word mentor? What comes to your mind? Anyone? Helping others? A guide? Who do you think of when you think of... Uh, Coaching. Who? Coaching. Coaching, yeah. A trusted resource. A trusted resource. Excellent. So, with Toastmasters, we have mentors also. Their job is to help you as a new member excel and succeed. There are a few points here that you can see that helps them do that. So you can rely on a mentor and Toastmaster to take a personal interest in what you're doing. They want to know what you want to excel at and help you get there. They serve as the role model, kind of like Mary C. Uh, or uh, Silas had said, a coach. They help coach you in things. A lot of times people can feel like, I need to sign up for Toastmasters, but I'm a little scared. What do I need to do? And so maybe we kind of hold back on doing that. Know that the mentors will help give you insight. They're going to help you know what it takes to actually be in Toastmasters and how to accomplish and how to navigate all the different things that there are to do in here. Again, their goal is to help you become successful and their mentors want them to become successful. Oops, sorry. So again, with the Toastmasters <laughs> who are entering in, a lot of times we get scared because we think, I don't know what's going to happen. What do I do next? The, toast, the mentors are going to help you learn the program. We have two different programs. One is a confident leadership uh, man, or manual that we go through. That helps us with roles such as the grammarian, the timer, our general evaluator that you'll hear from, you're, he'll, you'll hear from later, uh, our Toastmasters Lindsay is. And then we also have our confident communicator manual. Now that manual has 10 projects in there that equate to 10 speeches. You're not expected to come in and just start giving speeches all on your own. Your mentor is going to help you navigate that and figure out what does it mean to give a speech in Toastmasters? What does it mean to get the content ready? And what are the themes and what are the projects when they focus on certain things? How do I understand all that? Your mentor is going to help you with that. They'll help you understand the club standards and customs. For example, you've heard how some of us this morning already We've come up here and we've given a, a greeting that's customary in Toastmasters about, you know, thank you fellow guests and other Toastmasters. There are, there are times where we need to understand <coughs> what words to say and our mentors, your mentor is going to help you through that. They're going to help you develop confidence. You're going to participate more because your mentor is going to help you sign up for some of the roles. I know sometimes in generally in clubs, we can tend to sign up for something and then we just take a seat in the back row somewhere and kind of wait till we get our feel for how things work and then we'll sign up. Your mentor is going to challenge you right at your first meeting to sign up for a speaking spot or, and or a leadership spot in the club. Through your time with your mentors, you're going to learn speaking skills that you probably either <coughs> never knew you had or have had and you're just going to make, they're going to become better. For example, vocal variety for your body movements or making eye contact with people. What to do with your hands. <coughs> All those are speaking skills that your mentor is going to help you out. And not just your mentor. I, I, I'm speaking for the mentoring program, but all the Toastmasters do want this to happen for you. Now, with our experienced members, sometimes we can feel like, what do we have to learn? But there are more things to learn. We're not done learning at any point in our Toastmasters journey. So we're going to learn new skills. I may be okay at speaking, uh, I'm sorry, being an entertaining speaker, but I may not know anything about how to be a humorous speaker. With having mentors, even as long as I've been here, I can still learn new things from others. So here are some of the benefits. 
here's some of the benefits to the mentors that they get, okay? They're going to learn from their mentees. The thing with mentees is that we usually have fresh ideas and new ideas that our mentors don't have a lot of times. So by meeting with them, we'll get some of that insight. We remain productive. <laughs> Instead of just coming to a meeting after meeting and then all of a sudden finding we're in a stagnant place, we actually are engaging with new people and helping them along. And it, I feel like, for me at least, when I mentor folks, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel a sense of accomplishment. You're doing something for others. The main thing with that is I'm thinking, someone helped me out. It's only right for me to help someone else out. Someone took the time out of their schedule to mentor me and get me to my, the spot I'm at. Let me do the same for others. We don't do so well in this club with receiving recognition for our mentors. I will not sugarcoat it. But we have some room to grow in that area, and I do have some ideas. So the benefits to our clubs is we get more members. So for example, today as I stand up here, maybe you've considered joining Toastmasters, but now that you're learning that there's a mentorship program that's gonna help you as you transition, as you learn it, maybe you're more apt to saying, you know what, I wouldn't mind joining actually, now that I know I'm not gonna to have to do this by myself. We get more satisfied members because as you meet with your mentor, you find that you're just more happy about where you're going. They're gonna help you get to your goals. You know, I know Lindsay probably reached out to someone before she stood up here and was saying, here's how I want, here's my project, here's what I have to do, here's, you know, what do you think? And they probably gave her that advice and it helped her. So she's feeling confident. She got up here and she's knocking it out of the park up here. So you get that same feeling from your mentors also. We have higher member retention. The reason for that is because if you're happy at being somewhere and doing something, uh, doing something, you continue to do it, don't you? You don't just walk away from it. And sometimes there's some life challenges that happen. But on, on, on the majority of, of the time, if you feel good about what you're doing, you want to continue doing it. So I'm not going to go through all these lists, but you can see there's quite a few qualities here that make a mentor, right? A lot of you may think you don't have these <coughs> qualities, but I guarantee that maybe you don't have all of them, but you have some of them, and that's what's needed. Obviously, we need to be respectful for, to our mentees because they may not be as experienced as us. We want to be patient and flexible. <coughs> Here at State Farm, we all understand what it means to be flexible. We have meetings that change all the time, so if we can't meet with our mentee, think about times outside of work. <coughs> Okay. <clears throat> I think this is one of the most important qualities that a mentor can have, in my opinion. If you can listen to the person who's telling you what they're feeling, if you can ask them the questions and hear the response back, you help that person, the mentee, feel so, I feel so ex glad, I'm so happy that when people listen to me, they're giving their time up to actually look at me and listen and think about what I'm wanting or needing. So when we have our first meeting, this is, as some of you will know, I've just paired up mentees with their new mentors recently. And maybe you have had a meeting or you haven't had a meeting. Don't lose heart if you've already had a meeting and you didn't follow this. This is just more of a guideline. So for those of you who haven't had a meeting, this is a good place to start here. But what you wanna do is obviously you wanna set time up with your mentee, okay? Find a place and time that works great for the both of you. You want to get, now they'll have already gone through an orientation with the VP of Ed, with myself, but it's okay to still get them to know what it's like to introduce themselves in front of a crowd, in front of a crowd. Kind of like we, I was talking about earlier, how, you know, fellow Toastmasters honored guests and things. Get familiar with those, with those customs. Um, show them how to sign up for a role. Now, in the, in the orientation, we'll have already gone through with them to make sure that they have um, an account that they can log into. But with your ment with the mentor-mentee relationship, help them go out there and actually get their name on a speaking spot somewhere. I know we've had some challenges with some speaking spots. I'm hoping that those are gonna go away very soon. I'm very excited about some things that we're talking about. With, and with leadership spots too, as uh, you know, the general evaluator, the Toastmaster, all these other different spots that aren't speaking, get signed up for those too. Your mentor is gonna help you get there. Um, and then mostly, spend as much time as you can with the icebreaker. Now, the icebreaker is the very first speech you're going to give in Toastmasters. And that's going to be a speech where you're just telling people about yourself. So spend a lot of time on that. In the next meeting, 
you're going to want to do, you're going to want to make sure that the mentees know all the resources that are available to them, such as fellow Toastmasters in here, uh, YouTube, where there's videos of other speeches that people have done, uh, the SharePoint site, <laughs> and Toastmasters International website as well. There's a lot of different resources out there. Uh, you're going to give them positive feedback. Explain some of the responsibilities that they have uh, in the club with meeting the goals. You know, when everyone is inducted into the meeting, they take a vow, and one of those is to make sure that we have meetings regularly that we can have people to fill that spot up. Um, and then just continue helping them with speeches or whatever else they need, you know? And then over time as you meet, these are some of the other benefits or some of the other actions that you're gonna to wanna to take part in in those meeting times. Uh, one of the things that I wanna mention is when you invite Menti to other events, there's other things outside of state, I'm sorry, outside of Toastmasters that happen. We have district conferences, we have a Toastmasters Leadership Institute that goes on. Uh, there are contests. contests, thank you. There's contests that happen also. So there's gonna be, there's other things happening. Um, and then officers do these. Once a year, Toastmasters has officers. So we have a president, vice president of education, membership, uh, secretary, treasurer, and sergeant of arms. I didn't miss anyone, did I? Yeah. And vice president of public relations. Um, and every year, those people can change. So if you have skills in those areas, don't be afraid to put your hand up and say, I want to run for that next time and see what it's like. You can shadow someone who's currently on the board. Um, actually, if any of our board members are here, please raise your hand real quick. You can ask any of these people, all these folks out here, what it's like to run, to be on the board. Um, and then explain the speech contest. In, the, in your meetings, it's encouraging, I want you to encourage your mentees to follow, or not follow, to sign up for these speech contests. They're actually really cool and really fun. Kim, she, who's our president, she was able to sign up for one and she got all the way to the international level, which is the highest level you can have. And Shannon, was our humorous speaking in our humorous speaking contest last year? Hilarious story. If you haven't heard it, you, you, I don't know if you ever recorded Summer Shannon, but to share it with folks. Okay. <laughs> and then describe the organization. Just that Toastmasters is larger than what we see here today. So the qualities of the mentees goes without saying. There are some of these qualities that you guys got to have too. Okay. It's not all the work on the mentor. The thing I want to I want to hit on is. <clears throat> Eager to learn, sorry. Eager to learn. It's important for you as mentees to schedule your time with your mentor, not your mentor to schedule time with you. You're the one who benefits greatly from this. But in the end, a mentoring relationship, this is the only relationship that should be <laughs> right here, okay? This is the only one that I'm committed to for life. My mentoring relationships are relationships that are not like this. They're gonna change. There is a time when it will end and it's okay. I might need better development in other areas of my speaking skills. And one mentor cannot give you all of the skills that you can possess. So in the end, I want you guys to just experience everything you can that mentoring brings you. I want you to learn as much as you can so that you benefit from it. All right? Thank you, Madam Postmaster.